Today we're going to talk about kidney design, and we're going to depart a bit from what is real and what's now, maybe take a walk back into history a bit to give us an idea of how kidney designs developed, what were their strengths and weaknesses, and why have we developed a design now that seems to favor the way we use it, both in acute and chronic kidney support. So let's start with the coil kidney. The coil kidney was exactly what it said it was, a series of, of uh, coils that in effect was one long piece of tubing flattened out in, in cellulose. So it was a cellulose sort of ribbon that went around continually and then ended on the outside where the blood flow would come in to the beginning of this ribbon. The blood would flow around this continuous ribbon and then come out. And on the outside of this ribbon, this entire ribbon would be then placed into a bath. And that bath was the dialysate. So the dialysate would come in and leave at metered rates. What would happen is the blood would come in, have to flow through the entire system and move out. The support structure for this, if we were to take a piece of the kidney, is still the same membrane type. Again, this is cuprophane, so it's a different type of plastic that we were talking about, or a different type of material that we were talking about. And this was structured on something to hold it straight, so almost a lattice work. So this lattice work would allow the kidney or the membrane or the ribbon to stand up and give you the full surface exposure. However, when you put any type of pressure across that membrane, the membrane would bulge through that lattice work and create different volumes internally. So when you began to try to ultrafiltrate across that membrane through internal blood side positive pressure, you began to get increasing volumes of blood within that kidney. So this design gave way to a more structured design. The more structured design was a keel type design or plate design. In this situation, you had a series of plates and what would happen in this area, again, dialysate would come in on the outside of the plate and leave on the inside of the plate and blood flow would enter and leave where the plate was now set up in a fashion rather than coil in a series of flat plates one against the other but still with that ribbon that ran across those plates. So the blood flow would go this way and around, out and around, back and around, back and around, and then finally come out. This structure also had a lattice work to it. It was stretched a bit more so there was less giving at higher internal blood side pressures. It allowed for ultrafiltration. It allowed for stability inside the blood compartment. However, at the higher blood flows and at the higher internal blood pressures, this membrane would push up against its supporting structure and as such decrease the surface area. So when you had higher blood flows or higher internal pressures, the membrane surface area would decrease. And so there's this yin and yang between what's an optimal blood flow and pressure and what's a good clearance surface membrane that was required. This was used up until the mid 80s. In the late 70s, early 80s, 
another design came in, and you're all familiar with this, and that's the capillary kidney design. Capillary kidney design allowed for potting material to be placed at each end of the kidney and small capillaries to be developed. And these capillaries were exposed at both ends and stretched in a process that kept them rigid. This rigid process allows for no internal volume changes at different pressures or at different blood flows. And so therefore, the volume of blood that's within these systems is much more stable. Now, during its evolution, there were a series of header design changes that happened. For example, there was a header design that had the blood flow in from the side so that it would circle and go down. There were header designs in which there were central openings, and this is the one we use today, without any distribution cap. There were designs in which there were a distribution area, so the blood would flow into the distribution area. All of these design changes were trying to affect a good, steady flow across all of the capillaries. And that's what we have today with the design that we're using, a capillary flow kidney. Now, what are some of the strengths and weaknesses? If we go back purely to the plate dialyzer, and we'll take one plate, if you clotted, and the blood's flowing this way, and then going around to the next plate, and then coming out and going around to the next plate, as you can see. If you had a clot, that clot would sit right here. The blood would flow around it, and you really wouldn't lose much surface area because the clot was attached to that piece of surface area on which it was attached, and that was the only surface area that saw a decrease in blood flow. If, on the other hand, you use a capillary kidney, and you have a clot forming here at the header entry, or here at the venous exit, you lose all of this surface area because blood can't flow into it. You lose all of this or much of this surface area because blood can't flow out of it. So depending upon whether you're doing convective or diffusive forms of therapy, clotting becomes a much bigger aspect. Now, when we do continuous forms of therapy, we tend to have a surface area that's much beyond what's required for the rates that we're running. Larger surface area kidneys will generate not much more in urea clearance, but may generate a bit more in middle molecular clearance. And that's something that we'll talk about when we get into membranes and surface areas. But what's important is that we can, in continuous therapy, accept some clotting, but recognize that that clotting may have bigger significance, a much bigger significance in the capillary design kidney than in the plate design kidney. We are out of plates. These are much easier to use. This is something that needs to be addressed and attention given to that. And we'll talk about how you can figure whether or not a kidney is starting to clot off by things like fun-bun ratios or other methods of looking at surface area decay over time, again, when we talk about membranes. So <clears throat> what I'd like to do is try to move to the other side of the equation now, the dialysate or hemofiltration side of kidney design, and give you an idea of how that has changed over time but more specifically, how there are specific designs for specific uses. And let's stay with the capillary kidney. If we have a capillary kidney, which now, as we know, brings blood in and moves it out through its blood side components, depending upon how you want to use that kidney will dictate the design that you would like to use. 
For example, if you want to do pure hemofiltration, don't want to do anything else, generally, it's a single dialysate port on that side that will allow for your ultrafiltration or hemofiltration removal. Blood still flows through, it collects in the kidney, and moves out through that port. If, on the other hand, you want to do diffusive forms of therapy, designs have generated from either both on the same side a dialysate inflow, a dialysate outflow, always in a counter current circuit. There were designs that had dialysate inflow and outflow on opposite sides of the kidney, always counter current. What seems to be the most in use now is a standard two port use that can be used either as a hemofilter or a diffuser, a hemodialysis uh, kidney. This only allows one form of therapy, that is the single port. The two port kidney allows you to choose what you want to do using that same kidney. And that's definitely an improvement, not having to worry about changing equipment when you decide midstream that you may want to change your form of therapy. So, what we've tried to do today is to give you an idea of kidney design, where it came from, what were the factors that were important in the blood side, the dialysate side or hemofiltration side, as it evolved into what we are using today. And this should be the focus of some pretty good and heated debates in your topics today.